Next, we're looking at applying the cosine law. Sometimes you cannot use the sine law to determine an unknown side length or angle measure in an acute triangle. And there are two examples shown here. In the first example, we see we have two sides and the angle between them. But there is no known angle across a known side, so therefore we cannot use the sine law. And in our second example, we have three sides and there are no angles. So there is no known angle across a known side. So again, we cannot use the sine law. However, we have what's called the cosine law. The cosine law states that for any triangle ABC, that A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A. Or, B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine B. Or, again, C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. We can see this is just a modified Pythagorean's theorem. And this works for non-right triangles. So let's go through a few examples on how to use the cosine law. First example, we have triangle ABC. And we're told that angle A is 58 degrees. Side B, which is across angle B, is 32 meters. And side C, which is across angle C, is 40 meters. We want to determine side A. This is a non-right triangle. There is not a known side across a known angle, so we need to use the cosine law. The question is, which version of the cosine law do we use? Well, we use the one that's attached to the angle we are focused on. And again, we're focused on angle 58, which is angle A. And in this equation, there's only one version of the formula that has angle A included in it. So we're going to use a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of angle A. So again, we're going to use a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of angle A. And why do we use this one? Because we know angle A. So let's sub in our variables. We don't know a squared. That's what we're solving for. However, we know that B is 32, C is 40, and again, B is 32, C is 40, and cosine of A, and A is 58 degrees. So using your calculator, let's determine what A squared is equal to. We see that A squared is approximately equal to 1,267.407. And therefore, if we want to find the value of a, since this is a squared, we are going to square root both sides of this equation. And we get that a is approximately 35.6 meters. And now we found the length of that third side. So this is the way to use the cosine law to find a side length. Let's look at our next example. Example two, again we have a triangle, this time it's D, E, and F. We know that side D, which is opposite angle D, is 4.0 meters. We know that side E, opposite angle E, is 4.3 meters. And side F is equal to 1.8 meters. Determine the value of the smallest angle. So instead of trying to guess which is the smallest angle, you should note that since side F is the smallest side, then across side F will be the smallest angle. So that would be this angle here, angle F. That'll be the smallest angle. So again, across the smallest side is the smallest angle. Across the largest side would be the largest angle. So we need to decide what version of the cosine law we need. While we don't have A, B, and C in this, we have D, E, and F, we want the version that has angle F in it because we want to solve for angle F. And if we go back to our versions of the cosine law, we should see that if we replace this with angle F, then it should start 
with f squared. Notice b, b squared, a, a squared. So our formula will look something like this. We will have f squared is equal to d squared plus e squared minus, and remember this 2 always has the same two variables attached to it, so minus 2de cosine of angle f. And if you don't like dealing with d, e, and f, change them to a, b, and c. If that makes it easier for you. So let's put in what we know. We know that f is 1.8. We know that d is 4.0. And e is 4.3. Minus 2 times 4.0 times 4.3 cosine of angle f, which is the angle that we're looking for. So we have all the other variables filled, we just need to solve for the angle. So first of all, let's simplify this a bit. On the left side here, we have 3.24. Taking these two squares here, we end up with 34.49. And then minus, if we simplify this here, gives us 34.4 cosine f's. Now a lot of students will try to combine these two here, but since 34.49 does not have a cosine f attached to it, we need to move it to the other side to isolate for f. So our first step is to get rid of that 34.49 and bring it to the left side. And that'll give us negative 31.25 equals negative 34.4 cosine f we want to get cosine f by itself, we need to divide both sides by the negative 34.4. And we see we end up with 0 0.9084. Take at least four decimal places for this next step. And that's cosine of f. And if we've done this right, at least in grade 10, we should always get a number that's less than 1. So some decimal number. So this one involves quite a few more steps. We had to substitute our values in, move over the constant, divide, but we still have one more step left. We want to find an angle. So remember, if we want to find an angle, we need to take the cos inverse of the ratio. So the cos minus 1 of 0 0.9084. And if you type that into your calculator, you see you end up with approximately a 25 degree angle. And there is the smallest angle in that triangle. So there's how we use the cosine law. To find the side, it's very quick. It's just three steps, one, two, and solve. To find an angle, there's a few more steps. We have to substitute, move the constant over, divide, then take the cos inverse. So there's a couple more steps when trying to find the angle using the cosine law.